Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys checking out the video today. Got a really good video for you guys today. I'm gonna give you guys a summer jig fishing tutorial modification. Gonna go over everything that I like to do for summertime shallow water jig fishing. Because guys, I'm telling you right now, July, August, and September, I have probably caught more quality fish on a jig flipping and pitching than I have any other time of the year with the exception of the pre-spawn, the little window during there. So a lot of people, they don't see jigs as flipping jigs as some type of a summertime deal. Most people go to plastics, but I'm gonna explain to you guys why a full-size big jig is what you need to be flipping under certain conditions right now this time of the year. So I'll try to get through this video. I got some seasonal allergies, man. I've been really hacking. So if you hear me coughing and sneezing, <laughs> you know what the deal is here. Um, also, guys, before we get started here, just a weekly reminder, please check out our summer Fish the Moment uh, Lake Map Breakdowns. If you guys are looking for a good place to fish jigs on your favorite lake or anything else, it's a really good resource. Um, this gives you 40 good GPS waypoints. You can download straight to your fish finder with, depth, with uh, tips and advice on how to fish each area and allowing you to duplicate it around the lake there. So I'll put the fish the moment link in the description. Much appreciated. Okay guys, um, here's how everything got started here. <clears throat> Back in the day, um, we didn't really have much soft plastics to flip. When I really learned how to bass fish and how to flip and pitch, and when I really started doing good in tournaments, um, everything was with the big jig. Um, you've heard me talk about my mentor, uh, Terry Thomas here lives, li actually lives here in the same city that I do. Ozark legend, the dude's won everything in Missouri. He's won everything about anywhere he fishes. He's won it. He just chose not to fish professionally. You know, he fished locally, but he was a jig master. And I learned from Terry about flipping jigs in the summertime and uh, was able to take it around the country and do well on it, even to this day in the summertime. So a lot of what I know and what I'm going to share with you guys in this video, it was set up with a foundation that Terry showed me and then I sort of modified it myself to put my own twist on it. So I'm going to go through, first of all, I'm going to show you how my favorite jig, my favorite color, how I modify it and we're going to get into a little bit about how and when to fish and under what conditions. So first of all, let's talk about the jig and the modification. This of course, this is my Blockit Old School jig. And we're gonna be talking about the 5 8 ounce size, guys. This is the size today we're gonna to talk about. You want the heavier jig in the summertime. You need that little bit faster fall, <clears throat> but you don't want like one of those big honking three quarter ounce or, or one ounce jigs. A 5 8 ounce head is plenty big enough to accomplish what we're gonna do here. And another thing about it, guys, is you gotta have the black and blue tinsel, not the black and blue rubber, the black and blue tinsel in the live rubber it makes all the difference in the the look that the jig has in the water in the summertime and i'll put the uh, bait works old block of old school jig link in the description you guys can order you some there if you'd like to um, but this is the key guys I, I can't stress enough to tell you how many more bites you will get with the flash of the tinsel and the action of the live rubber in that hot water. Now you can, if you don't believe me, you can try. Go out and get you a, a black and blue silicone jig like every company sells out there and then get one of my block of old schools in this color set up and you will find the difference. <clears throat> and also, <clears throat> excuse me guys, you will, you will see the difference in the water. When you put these two jigs in the water side by side, you will immediately You'll, if you say to yourself, okay, if I was a bass, which one would I hit? You'll see this thing glowing and flashing next to that silicone that's sort of like dull in the water. It makes a huge difference with that. So black, black living rubber, which the old school jigs have, they don't have silicone and the blue tinsel, uh, five or five eighths ounce. Um, next thing I do is I'm gonna put the trailer on it before I modify the actual jig. We're gonna modify the trailer and the jig. The jig color is just as a critical as the, I mean, excuse me, the trailer color is just as critical as the jig. Now, back in the day, Terry and I used blue pork frogs, blue Uncle Josh pork frogs. I still use the Popeye's blue pork frog occasionally, but one of the things I found in the summer is they like a little bit of flash in the trailer. So I've got this Zoom um, super chunk here with the, it's the blue, it's the blue sapphire. It's got blue glitter in it and blue. And the combination of the glitter with the tinsel in there puts out a really nice flash. 
So anyway, let's get this on here here. And the first thing I do with my trailer is here's the uh, stock, the way this, the trailer looks stock out of the package here. And I'm gonna modify this a little bit. I'm not gonna take any off the bottom because you need that to be able to thread it. But I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it into a V a little bit. And I'll show you what <clears throat> why I do that. <clears throat> so I've got it like that. Because the reason I do that is the side plastic here, guys, there's no, there's no reason you need it. It just sort of gets in the way of the hook. So I, I take that off of there. I'm concerned about the, the tails, not the main thing. I just want enough to, to be able to affix it to the hook. So thread it up on there, right through the center. That way I've got less plastic in the way of the hook. And then the old school jig here, it's got a really nice keeper you see there. You, you slip it up over that keeper and it never comes off. That's a feature we really worked on. So that's the setup like there before the trimming. Now the trimming is critical too, guys. You Obviously you could catch something like that. Is that not good looking? Look at that thing. That is a tidbit, man. First thing I do, like I said, this one's already been trimmed, but you, I always, we used to trim the old school jigs like this. So you can, you can see it's sort of trimmed parallel to the hook, but we got a lot of feedback from the buyer, from the customers, and they said they wanted to be able to trim their own guard so now we leave it untrimmed but what you want to do when you're trimming a guard is leave it about a quarter of an inch over the point of the hook let it come up about a quarter of an inch above it and then you just take a pair of scissors and trim it like that to where it's more streamlined and then also based upon how heavy the cover is i'll either leave the guard intact or i'll spread it out if you're fishing really cover a really heavy cover like flooded bushes don't do anything to the weed guard because it's stiff like this. This is the stiffest the weed guard is when you don't touch it. And if you're flip, if you're fishing really heavy cover, you need that stiffness not to get hooked up. But if you're flipping and pitching around rocks or isolated stumps or dock edges, open it up a little bit. Just spread out those fibers just a little bit like that. And uh, that softens the guard up a little bit and sometimes you'll get a little bit better hook set. Now, the next thing is I'm gonna trim this skirt. So when you're trimming skirts, guys, you don't ever wanna just come across and cut it straight. You don't ever want anything uniform. So when you're trimming a skirt, I just wanna knock a little bit of this off to show more of the legs here, but come up and like go halfway up in the skirt and cut off a couple strands, and then come down and cut, cut off a couple, and then come up and cut off a couple. And what the thing is, you want it to get it all gnarly looking. You don't want it to be uniform looking anywhere. So I'm, I'm cutting up just a little bit, just to show a little bit more of that tail like that. But I want it where I've got some crazy looking legs where some are shorter, some are longer. It just gives it more of an imperfect look. But that's the, the final product with that, guys. And I mean, when you see that in the water and you see that thing flashing, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so we got our jig set up. Let's talk a little bit about uh, techniques and talk about how to set it up. When you want, you want to fish this bait on heavy line. I use it on 25 pound test, Seaguar and Vizex, most probably 95% of the time. I mean, it doesn't matter what the type of cover that I'm fishing because that Seaguar and Vizex is really invisible. But the reason I use the 25 pound test line is number one is the power that it gives me. And number two, it creates a fall on the jig that I really like. So the 25 pound test fluorocarbon Seaguar is my preferred line. And I, I use it on that Mega Bass Alkley's flipping stick, which is a seven foot, uh, uh, seven foot, yeah, seven six. Um, it's got, I would consider it medium, medium heavy uh, rod with that, you know, pretty beefy uh, flipping stick setup. But so 25 pound test line flipping stick. And the key with that in the summertime guys, when you're using this color jig is you've got to have the dirtiest water in the lake. So if you got a lake that has uh, water visibility, say, say you don't have any water visibility that's uh, less than two foot, this technique is not gonna be really that good. This technique is gonna be the best in the summertime when that water visibility is anywhere between say four inches in visibility up to like a foot and a half. We got a dang fly in here that's like freaking really bothering me. So four inch visibility up to about a foot and a half. Ideally in the summertime, I like that water visibility to be around eight to 12 inches. That's when it's gonna work the best. So if you've got a lake in the summer, July, August, September, that's got 
say six to 12 inches of visibility, this is gonna be a perfect scenario for this jig setup. Now, the best cover for me is wood. Um, it, isolated wood laydowns, stumps, flooded cover, uh, logs, you know, lay down logs, any type of wood cover mixed in with that dirty water. And most of the time, you're gonna have a lot of this to yourself because with all, with all the spotlight or live scoping spotlighters out there, out in deep water, there's simply not as much pressure on that shallow water. So the areas that you wanna look for are the extremities of the rivers in the lake, the extremities of the creeks. Some lakes may be dirty all over. I mean, if you're fishing, you know, a lake like <clears throat> Lake Ufala, Alabama, and you're on the upper, mid to upper part of that lake, you may have that type of visibility everywhere. So every lake's gonna be a little bit different with that. But try to gravitate towards that shallow wood uh, in the dirtiest water you can find. Now, also, you know, docks can be good with it. You can have shallow grass. If you, if you guys have, uh, if you fish someplace like the Red River uh, in Louisiana and you got all the, some reeds and shallow gator grass can be good. If you're fishing Lake Dardanelle in, in uh, Arkansas and you got shallow lily pads and shallow grass, that can be good. Whatever shallow cover is available, mixed in with that water visibility, you're gonna be able to catch them on the jig here. So finally, guys, with it um, is how you work the jig. It's really important is when you, th you, you've got to create the reaction strike in the summertime to get it. So when you throw that jig out there, don't just like drag it along like that. Don't like throw it out there and just drag it. When you throw it out there and you say you pitch it on a piece of cover, you need to pop it like that. Like let it sink over there and pop it off the bottom. And you want that jig to like dart off the bottom like that, even in shallow water, even if you're in like, you know, a foot, foot and a half of water, is make sure you throw it out there and just pop it hard like that. You're gonna get a lot more bites with it on there. So anyway, give it a try, guys. I'll put the Bait Works Block at Old School Jig link in the description there. You can also pick you up some Zoom Super Chunks there. Uh, it's just so fun to catch them like that, man. There's nothing funner than flipping into a foot and a half, two foot of water with 25 pound test line and a heavy jig and seeing that line twitch, setting the hook on a good one there. So hope it helps out. We'll see y'all.